five people you spend the most time with? For me, it would be my husband, uh, my three children, because we're always talking, and my cat, Chester. Do cats count? Oh, I'm gonna count cats. So, when you figure out the five people that you spend the most time with in your life, I'm going to have you think about those five people right now. Who are they? Okay, write them down or whatever you have to do and think about this. You are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. That means that your identity, your beliefs, your behavior are shaped by these people. Maybe my cat doesn't count because I don't think that I behave like my cat. Anyway, this happens whether you like it or not. Did you know that? It's something called social identity theory in psychology. And for some people, this is actually a good thing because they pick up all of those wonderful behaviors from people who are positive and smart, always growing and developing and laughing and being positive and finding solutions whenever there's a problem. Wow, those are great people to be around. They are the people that would look at how stressful it is when you have to squeeze out the end of your toothpaste and then say, you know what? We should take a binder clip to that. You fold it, fold it, fold it, put a binder clip, and look, there's a wonderful solution. These are the kind of people I need in my life, right? Always solution finding. And then there are those other kind of people. For some people, just by chance, their top five people are people who are stressed out a lot. Maybe for good reasons, maybe they want everything to be right, but they stress or they get angry because they just can't think of a better way to handle a situation or they're bitter or they're toxic in their communication and they're upset even about little things. These are the people who get upset and angry about the fact that you can't close the cereal box properly or you they flip people off in traffic because they don't know any other way, better way to see the situation other than the fact that the other person needs to be flipped off. Some of this could also be based on cultural factors because the communication style in some cultures is more rigid. One example is when a Filipino parent will yell at you when you're sick because they're stressed out about the fact that you're sick. How could we have prevented this? Now you're sick and they don't like it, but then it comes out like they're mad at you because it's just the way that it comes out. I can go on and on about this, okay? This is what I want you to do today though. Think about the five people. Who are your five people? And are they helping you grow into the kind of person that you want to be in this world? Because if not, it's going to take some effort on your part to identify, hmm, that's a behavior that I'm exposed to. I see it, I observe it, and it's around me. It's, it's one of my top five people in my life that I'm always around. And then you have to think to yourself, this is a way that I don't want to be. And then you have to think of a better way to handle that situation. You could treat every single one of those negative situations as a learning opportunity or a research opportunity for you to think, if that were to happen to me or next time if that happens to me, how can I handle it differently than that person just did, okay? Doing this kind of research, observing these different kinds of things, this is your first step to becoming a better you.